It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today I'm going to be introducing this video because uh, there's going to be probably a couple of different parts that I'm going to have to go away to do and then stitch bits together and then have some kind of conclusion. So I'm not really expecting very much in this first part to engage terribly heavily with you as my viewers, but um, I'm going to be checking out progressively, I guess, in this this uh, review, a very simple, basic, lightweight CNC machine. So I want to say thank you to Banggood for actually supplying this CNC to me as part of their summer sale promotion. So they're, uh, they're doing a 2019 summer sale promotion. Um, supposedly they're going to have a lot of stuff on offer, on discount. Um, you know, they're going to be doing giveaways and gifts and lots of coupons and things like that, um, supposedly. So if you actually are looking for anything, I don't know, fun to play with, you've already seen some of the things that I've done before, like the mini laser engraver, and you've seen uh, like the magnetic pad and the, the Yihua screwdriver set and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they have it in part of their catalog. So if you want something, uh, and you know you're you're not in too much of a wait please head over and check out their summer sale and maybe pick up a bit of a bargain now with that said this is not a paid review at all of this cnc machine that we're going to be having a look at and everything that i do and review is completely of my own opinion so the only thing that they have actually provided to me is the fact that they have sent this uh, seven kilo box to me and it's full of heavy things i kid you not it weighs seven kilos um <laughs> i actually hate to think how much it cost them to send it to me for review but i hope that uh they get their value out of my review and that you guys checking out this video will be able to see if it's something that you actually would be interested in getting or not for your own projects. So I'm not going to really bust open the box here because it's actually bigger than my table space. But what I want to do is just quickly go over the expectations of this product. So let's uh, have a look. So this is actually <laughs> just checking out the fact that i got a, a slack pop up there um and that we have a, a dungeons and dragons channel in our slack so so this is the actual product and what its current price is um and you'll see hey there you go there's some bits and pieces in regards to their summer sale uh and what is really curious and interesting about this is the fact that it is a complete kit that comes with both metal and 3d printed parts so it's it's interesting that we're starting to move in that direction where you know designs and kits are actually available in that way so if some of these parts break and you have a 3d printer available to you you can actually go and replace them yourself you just you know reverse engineer i suppose and print it now this is open source driven and it uses the open source gerbil uh, to run it and I've had some sort of research while I was waiting for this to actually come in and you can use online platforms like easel for example uh, and there's some other things that I will have to play with to to try and check it out you can see 7.5 kilos is actually what it is uh, meant to weigh now the cool thing is the actual work area is meant to be 340 by 160 by 40 millimeters now put that into context that's a 30 centimeter ruler and 30 by 16 is greater than a 60%. And noting that 40 millimeters is almost two inches high, you could potentially use this mini CNC to make yourself a 60% case out of a lightweight material. Now I've gone and done my reading and internet searches of what other people have done with this and it will do lightweight woods um, it should be able to do some acrylics depending on if you have good bits that are attached to it and if you go very 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 slowly and you have the right bit you can even do 
thin aluminium sheets to the point where somebody's actually gone and done a 1.5 millimeter aluminium sheet which is really exciting because for us you know 1.5 mil plates is is quite standard of course i don't expect that you would necessarily want to use something like this because it's quite slow but if you didn't want to spend the money and you had the time and somehow had the materials well you could potentially mill your own plate with this so uh you know you'll see the details there this is a bit of a, a gimmicky graphic because when when you cnc you literally do not get chunks of metal flying uh, sorry chunks of wood flying off like this so it's very stylized but it is quite a large working area uh that's as much as i can say in this part i don't know if i'm going to do a time lapse of me actually trying to put it together because i'll have to put it together in piecemeal over you know the next little bit of period whatever time i've got available to me I don't know how or where I'm going to set it up because there might actually be enough space on my desk for it to sit, uh, but we'll we'll have to see how that goes. It's certainly not enough for the box because the box contains the packaging of the, you know, the protective foam and all that kind of stuff for it, but once it's actually set up, it might actually be okay to fit on my desk. That said, if I'm going to run some kind of milling experiment and it takes hours and hours and hours and gets wood dust everywhere um maybe not so we'll we'll see how we go with that so please do hang in there uh, and i hope that following on from this video will be of course a little bit more with a put together cnc mill and of course running it through its paces plus some of my thoughts on the whole process see you soon Alrighty, so we're back with the second segment of playing with this uh, 3018 CNC mill. Uh, it's taken me probably five hours to actually put this together to a point where I'm actually happy enough to go to cutting. Um, some of the challenges that I've discovered in the build, and, and it's very obvious, is that the actual information provided to you is very poor. It doesn't really give you a lot of details and some of the details in this is also incorrect. Uh, and so what I kind of want to show you is just some of the things that you might need to be aware of if you are going to get this and use it. So here is, here is one of the pages from the actual instructions and down here it tells you that the pieces are 360 mil okay so it's a 360 mil by two of them um and then you've got some uh sorry it's it's referring to this one so so the tech writing is a bit poor because this dot point is actually for this image up here so we're talking 360 along that beam length that you can see there 360 times three but then later on when you go and have a look at uh, where they tell you to put these support bars, it says the actual length is 300. So what happened to the other 60 mil? So their maths isn't quite right there. Some of the other things that are really obvious in that this is a clone of another design is the fact that all the technical drawings show Allen key type of bolts with separate washers, whereas what you actually get with this kit are not that. They are Phillips heads that have sort of flat surfaces on them. I don't know, I, I'm not 100% sure what they're technically called, but they're definitely not what's in the drawing. There's a little bit of detail lacking in regards to implementation of some of this, but you know what, at the end of the day, you can still put it together if you have a bit of mechanical, technical uh, aptitude. It's probably the best way of describing it. One of the issues that I had putting this together was that the actual right the the screw thread here the lead screw that actually drives the the assembly is bent um so it, it makes it obviously very challenging to tighten things up if things are bent now i have it on the floor because my desk space here is actually too small for it the footprint for this is actually about almost 45 millimeters wide by 40 deep and um, I think it's about 30 high, roughly off the top of my head. 
So I'm going to show you what it kind of looks like. So this is it on the floor um, beneath me. And what I'm talking about is that the this XY lead screw, this one here, is actually slightly bent. It's actually slightly warped. And so this stepper motor that is over here, this stepper motor that I have that comes in the kit is actually not hard fixed. It is actually, it, it flexes. And the reason why it flexes is because if it doesn't flex, there's actually too much tension on this lead screw and it causes the stepper motor to spin freely and it doesn't turn the collet. Now I've also had to put a bit of hot glue on this because the grub screws don't have a lot of grip on it. When it jams, it actually spins the stepper motor spindle freely from this collet. So that's one thing to be aware of. Some of the other things that I've had to sort of deal with on this build is that um, the 3D parts, the 3D printed parts, for example, this gray plastic bit down here, this strut, and the actual main spindle holding assembly, which is what you're seeing here. It's fine that they're 3D printed. There's no issues there, but some of the brass inserts that actually go into it come out. So the actual insert for the lead screw on the Y axis, which is this one down here, uh, I've actually had to hot glue it in because it kept slipping out. So that's just something that you have to be aware of. These uh, rails that you can see here, they've got bearings in them. They are also at risk of coming out, but because there's actual no forces on them, they're just there for support rails, guide rails, it's not really going to be an issue. Whereas the lead screw does have force on it and uh, in inevitably there is that risk. Now, right down here at the front, this one here actually has a bearing in it to assist with the spinning of that lead screw. That bearing is really tight and it pops out, whereas the side one here for the x-axis, which is this one here, that one's okay. That one, I had no issues with it. It wasn't really coming out or causing any grief. So, it took me a bit of uh, time to get everything set up with stuff coming out, and one of the things that I discovered was that these were moving and slipping. I tightened them down and they were fine, but then they actually moved at an angle. They actually went from being straight and they ended up like that. So I had to retighten them. Uh, the actual screws, the Phillips heads on these are a bit weak because I've already almost stripped one over there. So having the Allen key version of those screws would be, would be really awesome if it actually had originally come with that. Everything else is set up, it all works, um, and just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I've got Gerbil open, which is um, basically one of the packages that you can utilize to actually run on this uh, CNC. I'm just trying to rearrange my windows so we can see that there's a bit of control happening here. All right, so, so this is the Gerbil that they, the version that they're using, which is I think uh, 0 0.8, even though Gerbil is now up to 1.1. And I've just loaded our logo into it and there are some jog controls available here. You can see that the status is idle is because it's actually connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a, uh, a small step and you can see that it says run. So it actually is doing uh, what we're talking about. And if I switch down below, so I'm just going to do that same jog action. You can see that it is, it is, it is, ooh. It does actually move as it should. So you can see on that stepper motor over here on the right hand side, if I do a hundred units of movement, you'll see how much wobble it's undergoing. That stepper motor plate, if I tighten that down, it will actually cause a jam because that rod is bouncing up and down. Uh, and it's not because it's not tight, it's because I have to, otherwise it won't spin.
Uh, so that's just something to be aware of that these kits, you know, as, as cheap and affordable and DIY as it is, may have some inherent issues. So what I've done now is I've already, um, I've zeroed things to a certain extent. So I'm going to zero my X and Y and my zero Z has already been done before. And so to do the Z axis, you basically do like what you do with 3D printing in that um, you get a bit of paper and you slide it underneath that and then you drop the axis and you move it until you find it that it's a bit tight then you're pretty much very much close to the surface of what you're trying to mill uh, and there you go so I actually don't know how well this is gonna go um, so I'm gonna home this did that do anything no so what just happened there? Radio. Um, <laughs> this is my first time ever using this stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I honestly don't know. So we can see that the actual Z is actually quite high. And if I show you what's going on, on in Gobel, that's where the Z is positioned right now. And directly below is our, our zero axis. So in theory, it will drop down to that point there, move across and then start milling until it achieves the depth that it wants to. Now, how I generated this G code was that I used uh, easel. So easel is just an inventable site. I loaded the logo. I set some parameters that's the size of the block and and I think that's the size of the bit that I've got because the actual bit details weren't really part of the kit or even on the product page uh, and I used its default cut settings and hopefully this is going to work and nothing's going to catch on fire or anything else like that so <laughs> uh, this is this is this is going to be a lot of fun it's going to be amazing um, what I'm going to do is how do I even start this thing to cut anyone know so a spindle is uh, we can I don't know what just happened there we go so you can hear that um, that's the spindle running it's spinning nice and fast and there it is. Okay. Um, how do we actually start this? I think there's a button down here that says send, which means uh, it should, in theory, um, send it. Now, of course, if this crash and burns and blows up and I get shrapnel in my legs and stuff like that, um, you'll, you'll get to see it first. So... This will this will be fun. Uh, <laughs> spindle on, and here we go. So nothing seems to have exploded or crashed yet. Um, I actually don't know how long this is going to take. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just stop the video that I'm recording right now, start it up again so I can record it as a separate block and then maybe zip it through a time lapse and then we'll get to see the end result. See you very shortly.
Okay, so that, that was an unsuccessful run because uh, you may have noticed at the end of that section just then when I was trying to do the time lapse of this milling, uh, the, the stepper motor came off because the vibration had actually dislodged the, the screws holding it onto the frame over here. And even though I'd actually put some hot glue onto it to try and assist holding it because I was concerned that was going to happen, it didn't help. And it ended up driving the actual screw out rather than moving the, the actual block. So that obviously is a failed and aborted run there. Um, and it was actually twisting this, this power and control cable around the motor, which of course was quite dangerous uh -huh. so i'm glad i was checking in on it and i saw that happening because then otherwise it could have been quite bad wow well what does that mean what does that mean i could tighten this up again uh well the first thing is i'm just going to raise the uh z axis to a safe height um, and that way I'm not going to run it into anything and damage the bit. But, you know, I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about because... I don't know what's happened to the actual... The nut that was with this, with this screw here. But, um... It's obviously gone somewhere. If I find it, I find it. If I don't, I don't. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten up one out of the two uh, screws that would normally be holding this and I'll show you what can happen um, if I if I drive this across You hear that? That's because that motor can't move. Now, if I loosen that off, it can now move. So, um, that's, that's obviously a big issue here and I'm not sure what the solution is. Potentially, I might need to think about if I want to actually keep using this, some kind of bracket that will actually hold this in place and stop it from pushing outwards. What's wrong, Arietti? Hmm? You're grumbling in the background. So, let's just have a look at what it actually did achieve. Um, because, you know, if, if this rod had not been bent and I was able to actually not have this issue where it's going to pop off I probably would have been able to complete a successful run of this. Uh, there are plenty of other people who have used this machine and have reviewed this machine successfully. So obviously the threaded rods that they got in theirs weren't bent or damaged um, and so they didn't have a problem. Uh, now what I'm going to do is because there's a lot of, obviously, milled powder on that. I'm going to go brush that off into the bin, and then we'll switch over to the desktop. So just bear with me for a couple of seconds there. Okay, so let's. So we're now back onto the desktop, and you'll see I've applied lube, and there's bits and pieces all over the place. And here is the end result. 
Now, it looks like it was actually trying to get... Uh, so it had done a bit of the keyboard of the logo, where the two switches were, and it started doing the actual circle around the logo. But that's when it ran into problems, and it sort of dislodged, because that arc there was it attempting to do the top swing of the circle around our logo. Now, it's still quite fuzzy, because, uh, you know, I haven't sanded it back and everything else, but the depth of cut was meant to be 2 mil, and it looks actually, it's got a good depth to that. And you can see, you know, word distinction-wise, I mean, this is, this is just cheap plywood, but it certainly was able to, with that 1.5 mil bit, cut into that and write, you know, the board quite distinctly, and the bottom half of the actual microphone stand is also quite visible there. So I'm going to say that this is a really interesting one for me since it has a lot of potential. But the potential right now for me on this particular one that I've got is not realized. And it's not realized because of some, I suppose, quality issues in regards to the parts that I received. And <clears throat> see if I can get that to focus down. There we go. Um, in the context that the lead screws were bent. I can't secure the actual stepper motor. I had some issues because the 3D printed parts had actually popped out and I had to use glue on them. But if you look past all of that and you do have the ability to tinker a little bit and you know what, as people who design keyboards and cases and play around with workshop type of things, I think this does have potential. You know, I could probably develop a bracket and 3D print it so it could hold that stepper motor in place and provide the right uh, cushioning so that it will not pop out. Maybe I might do that when I find the time to actually put something together or get a bit of assistance. And the thing is, you know, as a fundamental device, it does work. It does work. If you get better bits, you can get upgrades for the collet, you can get upgrades for the spindle and things like that. So, I'm not going to really spend much more time on this right now. Uh, my biggest issue is because of how big it is. It's, it's quite a large footprint. Where would I actually put it? Where would I store it when I'm not using it? And as you can see, I'm using it on the floor right beneath me. <laughs> so, that, that'll be a challenge for me in my uh, apartment here. But I do want to say thank you very much for Banggood for sending this to me to check out and review because it's actually been, while some parts were frustrating, it's been quite a learning experience. It's been fun to to actually put a kit like this together. Just be mindful that, um, yeah, it is a clone by the looks of it, but it does do the job if you can get past some of these minor technical issues. So hopefully I'm going to have a product link below that you can check out on Banggood's site may or may not have a discount um, you know the summer sale promotion for example is happening and so you might be able to grab a deal or some coupons that can support that over the summer sale uh, and if you like this kind of stuff if you want to see me mess around and give you a very honest approach and opinion and you know actually talk about the issues that I encountered please hit that like button of course if you want other people to check this out so that they're aware of what's out there for amateur home DIY CNC's then please hit that share button if you somehow came across our channel and you're not a subscriber I would really love and appreciate that subscribe button being hit as well plus if you want to get notifications on when our next videos come out in regards to anything that I'm doing here keyboards playing with kits reviews and whatnot then of course please hit that bell button as well don't forget we do have a podcast series the board podcast generally weekly where we talk about stuff to do with mechanical keyboards so there you have it thanks for hanging in there across uh however long this video tends to be all up and as usual until next time happy clacking